Alright, so hey guys, welcome to another Warframe video and Barakat here has come once again and on PC is on the Larunda Relay on Mercury. Now the new item this time around is the Parazon poster and I don't quite know why the preview looks like that because the poster looks nothing like it when you actually put it down in your orbiter. But it is a very cool poster. After that we have the Scimitar Prisma skin which is a fantastic looking skin for the Scimitar landing craft. I just like the Prisma energy flowing through it and if you pick the right colors it looks really good. Next on the menu we have a full set of the electricity based dual stat mods, so there is Jolt for pistols, followed by Voltaic Strike for melee, then there is High Voltage for rifles and finally Shell Shock for shotguns. Then he once again brought the Barakatir Glyph, which is exactly what you would expect, it kind of looks like Barrow taking a selfie. Next up is the Eminence color palette, which is actually very nice and I use the colors from this color palette a lot, they're nice and vibrant, so I think this one is definitely worth a buy. Especially if you are into this kind of color scheme and you don't necessarily buy platinum, so you only have the basic color palettes. Then he actually brought the Zylog, which is kind of like a Son of Sibiris, and it is a secondary that's using a duplex trigger mechanism, so when you press the fire button it fires one shot and when you release it it fires a second one, kind of like the Tigress. It is mostly focused on status with not a lot of crit and it does primarily slash and then a decent amount of impact as well. And the second weapon he brought this time around is the Volcar Wraith, which is an upgraded version of the Volcar Sniper Rifle and I personally don't like this one too much because the crit chance is pretty low, it does have high status but that's not that great on sniper rifles and it does mostly impact. And I also don't like the scope on this one, it can be pretty confusing in certain tile sets. Then we have a full set of the Prisma Edo armor, so the shoulder plates as well as the knee plates and finally the chest plate. This is just a really solid looking armor set, it's somewhat basic compared to some of the newer stuff but that's because it's really old and while the chest plate is nothing fancy, it's basically just two small bananas on your chest. There is an effect associated with it that will go off every time you do any kind of parkour maneuver, which does include sliding. Next up we have the Katir Shekara, which is just a nice little ornament that you can wear on your shoulder and the best way to showcase it is actually to use the Barrow Preview window because it's nice and zoomed in. This however does not allow me to change the color of this, so I just want to let you know that yes, you can actually change the color of this. Following that we have a full set of the Prisma Jet Sentinel armor, so the wings, the tail as well as the mask and this is just a very solid looking set of armor. I'm not a massive fan of the wings but I still like them and both the mask as well as the tail look really nice, especially once again if you pick some nice colors for it. Then he brought the Prisma Shade which also comes with the Prisma Burst Laser by the way and really the only reason why you would want to pick this up is if you really like the original shade and you want a slightly better version of it. That's pretty much it or you want the mastery I suppose because you know with all the animal companions and moas and all the sentinels we have yeah the old prisma shade doesn't quite hold up. Then there is something for your cavat as well in the form of the Nexus Gene Masking Kit and this has the Nexus Cavat fur pattern which looks quite nice even though this particular combination of colors is a bit ridiculous if you ask me and then there are four colors so we start off with the Mesa Blue Follow that up with the lovely Darvo purple, we move on to Ignis red and we top it all off with Nidus white. Then he once again brought the Orokin tower extraction scene which is kind of like the final room in the void where you extract so it doesn't have any of the side rooms but it has the stairs leading down from the door and then the stairs leading up to the extraction pods. Then he decided to bring the evil booster of doom aka the 3 day mod drop chance booster so if you want to farm some mods pick this up though 500 decades, yikes and the final item is as always the Sons of Inaros questline blueprint which is the item you need if you want to get Inaros. Now as far as my recommendation this time around I would definitely pick up Voltaic Strike and Jolt because those two are unobtainable outside of Barrow, the only other way to get them is just buy them from someone else using Platinum and whether or not you want to pick up High Voltage and Shellshock as well is kind of up to you because you can actually farm these two in game via Hive Sabotage though it can be a bit of a grind. And that's pretty much it, neither of the two weapons are necessarily a must have and the rest is pretty much just cosmetic so yeah. But then again this is just my personal recommendation so if you want to go for the swag and cosmetics first, go right ahead. So as always I thank you very much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the video and I will see you next time, bye bye.